Well, g'day there, traders and friends, market participants and enthusiasts right around the world. Thanks a lot for joining me. As at this Monday afternoon market recap, we do have a couple of minutes left in today's session. However, more or less that final print of the candlesticks collectively across the US markets has been print. That candlestick is very, very important to understand also to take into consideration the larger sort of backdrop that we have been speaking about here publicly and also privately in pro for a number of weeks. So I think it's best really at this particular juncture to begin with the NASDAQ because the NASDAQ itself is positioned for potentially a very big move, a big move that I do not want you to miss out on number one or two uh, to say that you didn't see coming. We've been speaking about this for quite some time, really since we broke out and established that first continuation type of gap over here towards the midpoint of August. We have been waiting for this market more or less to reverse and to come back down to this support area. And both publicly and privately have been speaking about the pop and then potentially that of the drop. Now, what we've done, especially during last week, was that during at least the second half of last week, we started to establish a little bit of a pop. We were a little bit unsure if it had more legs uh, to the pop itself. However, we were very much so cautious to potentially that of the drop. And really fast forward to today's session, you can see that we have just created that of a long day dark Morobozu candlestick. We are closing down probably very close to 100 points as at the final print of today's candle. But what is most important about this move is as follows. And I want you to understand this. First of all, we've broken above resistance. We're retesting it as support. That's rule number one. Technically, we are still holding this level as support, even though we did close more or less just below that detailed resistance area. Point number two, you can see that this candlestick is more or less also closed on the upward sloping trend line that we have established since April of this year. You can see that this has been in effect for a number of months and it is, I'm not sure how many specifically, we can count them very quickly. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six. This is more or less the seventh retest of this upward sloping bullish trend line. And what we've been speaking about is the potential for the market um, if it chooses to do so, um, if it cracks this, that we are going to establish that of a deeper intermediate correction. Now, that is looking very probable as at the close on Monday. We haven't definitively closed below the upward sloping bullish trend line, nor have we closed below that old resistance turned new support, or at least we're very close, uh, more or less closing on that. But if you see continuation, all right, in the NASDAQ actually closing below these lows and breaking below this trend line, I'm warning you right here, right now, look out below. Because when you put this in context just to see the sentiment and the psychology of what's going on up here. We've printed a fresh new all-time high. All right, the sentiment of active market participants is extremely, extremely skewed to the bullish side. Um, everybody is rather acting haphazardly and they're not really recognizing some of the divergent signals and also just the general overbought, overheated, sort of overextended state of the market since we have been grinding off from the support area that essentially set up uh, very early on in the calendar year. You can see we came on down here very close towards, well, first of all, in the month of February, but also really definitively where we used it as that pivot point, the turning point back in the month of March and also, sorry, March and also April. So again, with this rise in the markets, we have taken out the swing highs both in January and also in March. Now we've overshot them. And as we've done that, if you pay attention to these oscillators, not only on the daily time frame but also on the weekly time frame. We are setting up some very strong sell signals collectively across the board, none more so than that of the MACD. When you see the MACD shift, it is a very bearish signal. We've got a high and what we've just done as at Thursday, Friday and during today's session is create that of that secondary lower high. Now, I've also been speaking about this particular piece of analysis, the ADX and the CCI. Ask yourself the question, is the CCI now poised above the positive 100 line? just here. And the answer to that question is no, it's not. It's printing at 67.50. So the odds of the trend continuing immediately off from the support line um, have really decreased and are continuing to decrease the further we push away from that positive 100 line. Also, we've been asking ourselves the question, as the markets have been popping collectively, have we seen a turn up in the ADX? And the answer to that question is also an astounding no. So we're seeing some very important reversal signals when it comes to the actual chart structure, lower highs, we're seeing leaning potential double tops. 
we're resting right on this bullish trend line along with this resistance turn support. And again, if we see continuation below this level, you're going to see a lot of tech companies, also other companies held within the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones Industrial Average potentially get hit by a big wave of selling pressure. Selling pressure that we've been speaking about for a number of weeks as we've been drawing back on up into these fresh new all-time highs. So something to consider um, as at the close on Monday, yes, we are still above the exponential moving averages, but what is more important at the moment is not the exponentials, but more so that of the oscillators in conjunction with that resistance area and the CCI tanking along with the ADX not turning up. Very important signals. But if you understand how to read them, at least it can keep you out of a bunch of bullish trades at specifically the exactly wrong time and also wrong location. Now, if I continue this discussion into the S&P 500, you can see the pop on this particular market. It did go a little bit higher, um, relatively speaking. You can see that we came on back down, we closed the open window, we retested this support area. Um, it looked as though we were setting up a bull flag, a lot of people positioning themselves, technically speaking, which is somewhat correct. Um, however, not taking into consideration what the Dow Jones is doing, and it's looking to see a little bit of a rollover. Now, again, we were only down 16 points and we haven't taken out this little neckline over here, nor the support area. And also on top of that, we are still quite a distance away from this rising bullish trend line. So that's why you should be paying attention to the NASDAQ. Um, more specifically at this particular juncture. If the NASDAQ cracks, the other markets are going to follow. The NASDAQ will lead the other US markets lower and most likely global markets as well. You can see a really definitive sort of double top under construction at the moment. And I just wanted to point out, if we don't see a continuation to the downside around this area, well then of course we've still got these long orientated open orders, right, on our charts above the swing highs that we printed later in the month of August, all right? So I just wanted to point that out, trying to keep things uh, as neutral as possible, as non-directionally biased as possible, but really just understanding and listening to what the charts are telling us at the moment, very important signals that we've been picking up on. The final market I wanted to speak about here is that of the Dow Jones Industrial Average, and this is really the outlier. The reason it's the outlier is because when I go out to the weekly chart, we're not printing up at 27,000, that's where we should be printing. Uh, compared to or at least taking into account where the NASDAQ and S&P 500 are, we're more so closer to 26,000. You can see the print here, 26,044 points. So the reason I'm showing you this is because I know I've spoken about it, but it's very important. We still have this open window and it's a window that we still haven't closed. So every time we do see these little sell-offs in the Dow Jones Industrial Average, if I do bring up that of the exponential moving averages, generally we see a bounce, okay? Generally we see some form of of a buy the dip sort of continued mentality, which ultimately just drifts this Maya, uh, market, pardon me, up and up higher. The problem is, however, is that this is looking relatively weak. This sort of rise that we have been in since the, the push off off from this intermediate trend line in the month of July is just looking very, very tentative. It doesn't look all that sort of legitimate. It looks very frail. It looks very weak and it looks as though it's wanting to turn uh, specifically at any moment, we just haven't seen that material sort of turning point. We thought it would be up here. There's no reason why it cannot happen from this level, more or less, come all the way back down to 25 before potentially shaking out a lot of those oscillators that I just went through with the NASDAQ and the S&P before taking out these all-time highs and actually seeing a, a bigger sort of continuation to the upside. So again, something to think about there on the Dow Jones Industrial Average. I'm framing the NASDAQ as my market anyway, which is going to confirm where that intermediate direction is going to move, whether we take out the swing highs or whether or not we break below those rising trend lines. That's going to sort of dictate to us uh, confirmation when it comes to entries, directional entries in a bunch of these top 12 uh, trades over here. But at the moment, there is a lot of risk in this market, a lot of risk that a lot of people simply aren't picking up on. And I feel that I'm obliged again to speak about this to try and help you in the event that you are, um, you know, contemplating anyway, trying to buy this little pullback at the moment. It might be the beginning of a larger uh, type of correction. If you pay attention to the oscillators as well, you can see that again, collectively, we are starting to see sell signals and the Dow Jones is probably the least defined when it comes to sell crosses across the board for these oscillators as well. So um, very early on in this particular move or potential move at the moment, but there are enough red flags there to, um, to have you a little bit concerned about the state of this. Also, when I go into the CCI and the ADX, I think I actually skipped over this on the S&P 500. I just wanted to show you this also. The ADX certainly doesn't like this pop, even though it was more established and more rounded. 
than that of the NASDAQ in terms of bouncing a little bit higher. But you can see the CCI is very close to actually closing below 110.51 as well. So again, warning signals there, although we do not have that legitimate turn down below that positive 100 on the commodity channel index. And to close this out, when I speak about the Dow Jones Industrial Average, you can see the ADX doesn't really like this move whatsoever. It hasn't liked this move since essentially we turned up towards the back end of July or more so earlier in the period or the midpoint of June, which is quite interesting as well. But this is looking to turn and it's printing at 126. Keep an eye on this. If it cracks below 100, you're going to see a reversal take place across the board on these markets. Now, if I extend this to the Russell 2000 as well, you can see another engulfing candlestick right at this support area. So this is not a good signal. Uh, that you would want to see if you are a bull out there in the markets. Again, you can see this upward sloping trend line. These are very important. They give us structure. That's S for structure. And really what we do is we, we wait around until the structure definitively breaks, which then gives us, of course, our targets to trade to, right? The hypothetical what if situations where it becomes T1 and then also T2 in this particular instance for a larger market retracement also. Uh, when it comes to the upside play, yes, we have spoken about it. In fact, it was all the way back over here where we started to go long and over here at 1,594 based on this ascending triangle. And the interesting thing is, is that if you measure from here down to here and you measure it or at least project it out, you're getting these targets that are also reconciling with the backline uh, essential back test of the bullish uh, trend from 2002 through to the breaking. Uh, prior to the GFC in 2007, 2008. So if you follow closely with me, with my cursor up through here, that 1,758 or 56 trigger or target up here is telling us that there really isn't all that much upside left on the Russell until we would expect a lot of supply to sort of flood the Russell and potentially that of the Dow if it did reconcile a little bit with this market also. But this is a relatively bearish signal. Problem is, however, is that we still have support and you have to be cognizant of the fact that we do have a ton of support right in this sort of uh, ascending little triangle with no price action in it, just using the structure of the bullish trend line in the support area. So that's going to be uh, really the market analysis. It goes without saying that obviously when you see tech or at least the NASDAQ um, under a little bit of weakness, you're going to see weakness in a bunch of individual trades as well. I just wanted to very quickly show you this. You've got Apple setting up that of the double top. So again, uh, falling into, I guess, falling in line with expectations of what we have been speaking about for a number of weeks. You've got Amazon. Isn't this interesting looking like a little bit of a double top as well under significant weakness down $62.16. That is why in retrospect, we had these dash dotted lines all over the place when it came to long trades. We recognized the fact that these trends had already moved quite a distance and that the ADXs on these stocks were actually turning down coupled with these markets that were relatively flaky, not really moving in market uniformity with one another, we picked up on this and we spoke about it at nauseum. So very happy about the analysis, even if we're not particularly um, in, in, in many individual trades at the moment, unless we've kept our, our, ourselves out of um, a bunch of disasters, unlike probably a lot of people out there who don't really you know, understand the dynamics of the markets themselves. We've got Boeing Airlines. We've spoken about this again, coming up to 360 and then looking for reversal candlesticks. Well, to me, that looks like a high wave spinning top and we do have a bearish candlestick today right at that turning point as well. So we're starting to see this volume is trickling out of this at this resistance point. You need market confirmation prior to taking on these trades. I just wanted to really reiterate that we've got body pulling back, <clears throat> Caterpillar still trying to grind higher, but we're not really in any positions at the moment. More so management of rolling out of those. COP, no way you could get me to trade this stock above 74.88. I don't want to look like a fool if it can, continues to run. It's been one of those stocks which just sort of kicked uh, the trend, so to speak, off the markets. But look, no no reason to be interested in COP long. It's more so the rollover uh, based on what the markets are doing. Also, you've got CVX, which is just printed more or less a gravestone doji. It is that of also sort of a high wave spinning top, but the majority of the of the actual wick itself is on the upside as opposed to the downsides that is telling you supply 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 and it's also most likely correlating with the declining exponential moving averages as well which is all um also part of me setting up with a bull flag continuation just like we saw here in the month of august as well so you can see the weakness so to speak in a bunch of uh, stocks when you just go through or follow them as closely as what i do and what people do in that pro analysis class, Google again is looking under significant pressure down close to $20 today. If this gets moving, you can see the potential of tech really retracing. You can see this move coming 
um, really from 1,200 all the way down to 1,075, so to speak. So again, there is a lot of downside opportunity here, but you have to wait for the NASDAQ to confirm these moves. You should be rotating out of IPM. What happened on Thursday was a blessing. Liquidate the trade, be done with it. Netflix under pressure today, down $14.21. And to conclude with potentially one of uh, the best short candidates out there, Tesla. If you see Tesla begin to crack 277.10, also in alignment with the NASDAQ breaking below these support areas that I've spoken about, entry 7789, there is a fantastic opportunity for this to um, unfortunately more or less uh, cater. Crater moved down to uh, about $200 a share, long-term sort of large macro target on Tesla pains me to say it, but uh, it's there. The writing's on the wall. You can see the slopings of these higher highs, these erratic moves. Um, things aren't looking good for Tesla. And this just looks like the back test, the kiss of death, as we say in technical analysis of not only this old support turn resistance area, but also that psychological round number of $300 per share. You can see we're closing very close to 295 at the moment on Tesla. So again, a little bit longer, but I hope you appreciate that analysis. Um, I wish you all well. If you have any questions, please email me success at pivot point hyphen trading.com. All the best, everyone. It's James signing off on behalf of Pivot Point Trading. Goodbye.